So in this video we're just going to go through the variety of counterexamples that Kripke gives to the various theses that we saw in the last video. Here I'm going to follow more or less the order that Kripke gives them in the text. Um, unfortunately that's not the order in which he listed the theses we just talked about, so we're going to jump around a little bit. I'll remind you what each thesis was before we talk about the counterexample to it. So the first one we're going to consider is the necessity principle. So remember what the necessity principle said. It said that the sentence, if x exists, then x has most of the phi's, is necessarily true. So spelled out, that would mean if Kanye West exists, the sentence, if Kanye West exists, then he is the guy who interrupted Taylor Swift, he's the guy who was married to Kim Kardashian, he's the guy who made the album Jesus, etc, etc. That sentence is necessarily true. Kripke gives a bunch of counterexamples here and I'm going to focus on two particular counterexamples that seem to show that this just really can't be right. And the idea is that, well, even when we think about sort of the most important properties an object has, the ones that sort of are most salient to us, that most stand out, it always seems pretty easy to imagine the object could have lacked those properties. So one of Kripke's examples is Aristotle. As philosophers, we think of Aristotle as, you know, one of the great ancient philosophers, the student of Plato, the guy who taught Alexander the Great, the guy who wrote the metaphysics, the, uh, the Nicomachean ethics, and things like that. So there's a bunch of important properties that attach to Aristotle in our minds that we would associate with the name. But it also seems really easy for us to imagine that maybe Aristotle could have done none of those things. We can imagine Aristotle's life having gone really, really differently. For instance, we can imagine Aristotle early in his life just decided to go to North Africa instead of staying in Greece, and never did any philosophy, he never met Plato, he never taught Alexander the Great. Seems like that's a situation we can imagine. But of course, then it seems like the sentence, if Aristotle existed, then he was the student of Plato who taught Alexander the Great and wrote the Metaphysics and wrote the Nicomachean Ethics, that sentence doesn't look like it's necessarily true. We can really easily imagine a situation where Aristotle existed and his life went really, really differently, where he did none of the things that he's actually famous for. Now, of course, in that situation, we probably never would have heard about him, but we're considering the sentence as we use it. And we, can, and we right now, who do know about Aristotle, we can certainly think about a situation in which his life went very differently. Another example that Kripke gives, it's kind of, you know, it's not the nicest example, but it is it is evocative. Kripke talks at some length about the example of Hitler. So obviously people think about Hitler as the leader of the Nazi party, the instigator of the Holocaust, terrible things like that. But as Kripke himself says, well, that even if that's what actually happened in real life, we could imagine a possible world where things went very differently. So imagine a world where Hitler's art career was much more successful, he never went into a politics at all, so as a consequence, he never, he never rose to prominence in the Nazi party. We can very much imagine a situation like that. But now if that's right, then it doesn't look like it's necessarily true that if Hitler existed, then he was the, the leader of the Nazi party who instigated the Holocaust and so on and so forth. We can really easily imagine a situation where that sentence is false, because if Hitler had just gone and done art instead, well then he would have existed, but he wouldn't have done all the things that he, that he is infamous for. And Kripke says something very helpful at this point, which is that there's a big difference between the properties that we take to be important to people that we think about, and the properties that are necessary. Very often the properties that we use to think about a particular person, or that we associate with a particular person, are contingent properties. They're properties they could have lacked if things had just gone differently. So if Aristotle had left Greece at an early age, maybe he could have not been the teacher of Alexander the Great, or maybe not even been a philosopher at all. Likewise, if Hitler's art career had gone differently, he might not have ever gotten into politics at all. In both cases, the important properties that we associate with people are things they could have lacked if their lives had gone very differently. But it's hard to make sense of how you could even say something like that according to the description theory. Because remember, according to the description theory, it's just part of the meaning of words like Aristotle and Hitler that these important properties are associated with them. So it doesn't look like the description theory has the resources to describe what's going on in, the, in these possible situations that we're thinking about. They're forced to say things like, well, when you're thinking about Aristotle instead going to North Africa, you're not really talking about Aristotle at all, and that you must be talking about somebody else because he doesn't have the right properties in that situation. But that looks like it gets things backwards. 
it's not like we for when we're thinking about a hypothetical situation we sort of first remember what the important properties Aristotle has are and then use them to identify Aristotle in the possible world. As Kripke puts himself in, in an earlier bit of naming necessity, which we didn't read, rather we just think about the possibility directly. We just imagine, you know, how Aristotle's life might have been different or how Hitler's life might have been different. It's not like we use the, the properties associated with the description to first try and think about what that possibility might have looked like. So it looks like it's not necessary that people have the properties that we would we would instinctively say are associated with their names. And that's bad news for the necessity thesis. It looks like we're perfectly well possible of making sense of situations where it would be false that if Aristotle existed, um, he was the teacher of Alexander the Great and the philosopher and so on and so on. It's in fact very easy to imagine a situation where that's false. And that's not something we would expect on the description theory. The next thesis we're going to consider is the uniqueness thesis. So remember what uniqueness says. It says that one of the one of the properties or some combination of the properties associated with the name picks out that object uniquely. There's exactly one object that has has them. In the, to argue against uniqueness, Kripke argues that if we think about lots of names that we actually use, even even when we do associate properties with those names, the the list of properties seems to fall very, very short of identifying a person uniquely. So there's two kinds of examples we might consider here. One example Kripke gives is the, the example of Einstein. Now, some people know Einstein as the inventor of relativity theory, the guy who came up with relativity theory. But a lot of people don't even know that about Einstein. For a lot of people, all they know about Einstein was that he was a physicist. They might even know he was a physicist. They might just know he was some, some scientist or other. A lot of people, that's all they know when they hear the name Einstein. That's all that comes to mind when they hear the name Einstein. It's just some scientist. And yet they seem to know the meaning of the word Einstein. Why think that? Well, because they can say things about Einstein. They can say things like, Einstein was a scientist. They can ask questions like, well, what kind of science did Einstein do? So there's lots of reason to think they know the meanings of the word. But this is a, then the problem for the uniqueness thesis. Because if you just focus on these people, the property they associate with the name is just a scientist or a physicist. Is that a property that uniquely picks out an object? Of course not. There are many, many physicists. There are many, many scientists. So this is a case where it looks like the list of properties people are associating with a name falls very, very far short of picking out a person uniquely. Let me just give you one more example, one not, not, not one that Kripke gives himself, but I think it's helpful. So think about the names Beethoven and Mozart. So most people know the meanings of these names. They know that Beethoven was, a, was some sort of composer, wrote classical music. They also know Mozart was a composer, wrote classical music. But for most people, that's all they know about Beethoven and Mozart. They just know that they were both cla composers of classical music. That's all they would associate with the name the names Beethoven and Mozart, more or less. But there are loads of people who are classical composers. Associating the property composer of classical music with the name Beethoven is nowhere near enough to single out Beethoven. In particular, it also applies to Mozart. So this is another example of a pair of names where like, all people really seem to associate with the name is just something like classical composer. And yet they know the meanings of both names. Now, they might not be able to say a huge amount about the people, they might just be able to say, he's a classical composer, I'd like to listen to more of his music, or something like that. But again, it seems like a counterexample to uniqueness, because the list of properties just is nowhere near long enough or sophisticated enough to pick out an object uniquely. Classical composer, that just picks out lots of pe people, it and it doesn't distinguish even just the pair of examples that we looked at.